people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. The yoga event is held here. Severe injustice and they should be stopped. We should raise our voices. Condemn this uh, brutal act. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Amid rising tension between India and China at the line of actual control in Ladakh, there is hope for peace. Military commanders of both countries have agreed to stop sending more troops to their Himalayan border after high-level talks. The residents in Ladakh are with the decision. We have a report. Borders between India and China remain tense since after 20 Indian personnel, including a colonel, were killed in violent clashes along with line of actual control in Ladakh on the night of June 15, 16. Both sides have amassed well over 50,000 soldiers each, along with tanks, armored vehicles, howitzers, surface-to-air missile systems along the entire frontier in eastern Ladakh. The People's Liberation Army, PLA, remains upset at the way Indian troops preemptively occupied multiple tactical heights on the ridge line stretching from Thakung on the south bank of Pangong Lake to Gurung Hill, Magar Hill and Rezangla. Several meetings were held at the military and diplomatic level to ease tensions at the border. At a recent commander level talks, both sides agreed not to further escalate the border situation through a series of measures, which significantly includes not sending more troops to forward areas. However, experts believe that India can't rely on China. The Indian Army need to be prepared and ready for any contingency or any challenge which can come because it is difficult to believe what the Chinese are saying. In Himalayan desert, region of Ladakh, the residents heaved a sigh of relief after India and China agreed to stop sending more troops. They believe that it will avoid any actions that might complicate the tense situation there. If you don't want to go, it will be fine for us. War is better, it will be peace. The two governments have decided that they 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 have decided China is also launching psychological warfare against India by evoking memories of the 1962 war and tapping into Indian insecurities associated with it. The aim is to deter India from initiating kinetic action. There have been countless articles in Chinese media on how India will suffer a worse defeat than 1962 worried to miscalculate on war. Experts also believe that China wants to avoid war as much as India wants, simply because it does not need to wage a war when it already has the advantage. Rather, it would suit Beijing's purpose to create a fear psychosis in India's minds and win without having to lodge a war. Here, winning would denote forcing India to accept the new status quo. So far, India has openly shunned the option of applying coercive military pressure. 
In the Islamic State of Pakistan, the minorities have been facing persecution for decades. Not only the people belonging to minority community, the Hindus, Sikhs and Christians facing religious discrimination, but the girls are forcibly abducted and converted to Islam. The law of the country even fails to provide justice to the victims. In India, the members of the Sikh and Hindu community are now protesting to raise the issue. Seventeen-year-old Bulbul Kaur, the daughter of a Sikh priest in Pakistan's Punjab province, is the recent victim of forced abduction by Muslim men. The daughter of Granthi of Gurudwara Shri Panja Sahib, S. Pritam Singh, has been recovered after two weeks by the police. It is reported that her abductors forced her to get converted to Islam. The matter was taken up by the Indian Foreign Ministry with Pakistan envoy, after which the girl was allowed to meet her parents and go to home with them after she expressed the wish to do so. Bulbul is not the first girl, but several Sikh, Hindu and Christian girls in Pakistan were abducted, forcibly converted and married to Muslim men. This was done against the will of the girl, a majority of the minors. जैसे औरंगजेब जब रही धर्म परिवर्तन कर रहा था पाकिस्तान के आज के जो जो आज का जो वहाँ के प्रधानमंत्री हैं और वहाँ का जो सिस्टम है शासन है वो औरंगजेब की तरह काम कर रहा है जो किसी भी सूरत में बर्दाश्त नहीं हम अपने बच्चों के लिए लड़ाई किसी भी हद तक लेके जाएंगे सड़कों पे भी जाएंगे यूएन में भी जाएंगे और हम देश पर और दुनिया भर की सारी सिख जथेबंदियों को देश भर के लोगों को अपील करते हैं कृपया हमारा साथ दे इस लड़ाई में हमारे बच्चों का भविष्य जो है वो अंधेरे में In India, the Sikhs are angry about the persecution of members of their community living in Pakistan. Imran Khan! Imran Khan! Imran Khan! They took to the streets and protested near the Pakistan High Commission in New Delhi over the kidnappings and forced conversions of minor Sikh girls. The family of Bulbul Kaur, the 17-year-old daughter of the chief priest at Panja Sahib Sikh Shrine in Pakistan, said she was abducted by two men and the family didn't hear about her whereabouts for 15 days. They carried out a candlelight vigil in nearby areas, demanding international community's attention to the matter. Pakistan में arrest करी गई हैं जो जबरदस्ती जिनको धर्म परिवर्तन के लिए बोला जा रहा है हम उनके खिलाफ यहाँ पर मोर्चा लेके आए हैं लेकिन हमारी एक बच्ची को उन्होंने छोड़ दिया है हम चाहते हैं बाकी बच्चियों के लिए भी हम इंसाफ के लिए गुहार लगा रहे हैं ताकि वो बच्ची अपने अपने घर में वापस आ सके जिस तरीके से 55 लड़कियां वहां पे धर्म परिवर्तन करवाया गया और बाद में जबरदस्ती कह रहे थे कि लड़की अपनी मर्जी से गई है ये गलत है क्योंकि वहां पे लड़कों के साथ क्यों नहीं ऐसा हो रहा या वहां पे बड़ी उम्र की लेडीज साथ ऐसा क्यों क्योंकि 18 साल तक की लड़कियों के साथ ऐसा क्यों हो रहा है तो वहां पे ये बिल्कुल नेगलिजेंस है गवर्नमेंट की हम उसकी बिल्कुल वो करते हैं और इसमें हम जैसे बुलबुल बच्ची वापस आई है इसी तरीके से हम ये भी दरख्वास्त करते हैं कि सारी बच्चियां अपने अपने घर में सेफ्टी वापस आनी चाहिए These are second such protests by Indian Sikhs after the daughter of another Sikh priest in Nankana Sahib Shrine, one of the holiest of Sikhism, was allegedly kidnapped and married to a Muslim man last year. United States Commission on International Religious Freedom 2020 report has mentioned that such forced conversions of religious minority girls in Pakistan often happen with the collusion of local police. Moving on. 
At the ongoing 45th session of United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, Pakistan and China were slammed for violating human rights. Political activists have exposed both China and Pakistan for their involvement in gross genocide in the wake of Belt and Road Initiative. We have a report. This photo exhibition titled Stop Uyghur Genocide, Stop Uyghur Forced Labor in front of the United Nations highlights the deteriorating human rights situation in Xinjiang province of China. Pictures of Uyghur Muslims were put up to make the international community aware of the crisis during the UN Human Rights Council session. In the last three years, the Chinese government has forcefully detained between 1.8 to 3 million of Uyghurs and other Turkic people, destroyed mosques and graveyards, banned the use of Uyghur language as a teaching medium in some schools, denied the fundamental rights of Uyghurs in an attempt to erode the Uyghur culture, identity and society altogether. Recently, the new revelations of the use of Uyghur forced labor and the forced sterilization of Uyghur women by the Chinese government have added a new dimension to the crisis. This now constitutes genocide under the Article 2 of the UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Today, more than 3 million Uyghurs Muslims are suffering in 21st century concentration camp by Chinese government. So, and the Chinese government corporately, some other country and some international business entertainment to and uh, use the Uyghur for other forced labor. So that's why we call international stop business with China and we ask so internationally and uh, make a pressure to the Chinese government stop the Uyghur genocide. So it is the shame for 21st century if the silent is a crime. So we ask whole the world, whole the, uh, entire human being stand with Uyghur, support us. China's is not only violating human rights in its occupied territory, but has collaborated with neighboring Pakistan to exploit natural resources in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit Palestine. Both Islamabad and Beijing are allegedly responsible for crimes against humanity and mass genocide. Human rights activists from occupied POK and Gilgit Balistan are seeking UN's intervention to protect their rights. Victims from Sindh and other provinces of Pakistan have also been raising their voice for justice. Today we are faced with double colonization of Gilgit Baltistan as China joins Pakistan under Belt and Road Initiative. More than 100 human rights activists are languishing in prisons. For every 25 people, Pakistan has deployed one soldier in Gilgit Baltistan. Almost every single government official serving in Gilgit Baltistan is Pakistani. Our natural resources are being plundered. UN resolutions regarding Jammu Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan seem to have become obsolete, hence, a new approach has become the need of the hour. Therefore, I demand that Pakistan be tried for war crimes, that would that the world should collectively demand withdrawal of Pakistan army from our lands that all Belt and Road Initiative projects between Pakistan and China should be declared illegal by the United Nations. A political activist from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, Sajjad Raja, sought United Nations help to restore their political, civil and constitutional rights. He also alleged that the Imran Khan-led government in Pakistan is treating the citizens of the POK region like animals. We are treated as traitors in our own home, simply for defending it. By declaring our political activities illegal, this act gives the Pakistani army a free hand to assassinate our people through targeted killings and enforced disappearances, Pakistan's favorite action against all those who disagree with their policies. Pakistan is brainwashing innocent youth on both sides of the border in Jammu Kashmir, making them cannon fodder in the proxy war with India. 
China is collaborating with Pakistan to construct mega dams in illegally occupied POK and Gilgit Balistan. Azad Patan Hydropower Project, Kohala Hydropower Project, Neelam Jhelam Hydropower Plant, and Dayamar Bhasha Dam are some of the major projects being constructed in POK and Gilgit Balistan that Pakistan has given to Chinese companies. These projects have irked the residents who continue to express their serious concerns that with construction of these projects, there has been a drastic reduction in the flow of the river through the city. It has also caused serious environmental hazards in the area. China's CPEC corridor is illegal and detrimental to the heritage, culture and well-being of the people of the region. From China's Xinjiang to Pakistan's Baluchistan, the human rights violations are on rampant to make the CPEC project as successful. Moving on. Good times are appearing not too far for Afghans. Women in Afghanistan are paving the way for a better future and upliftment, where a 36-year-old Maryam Durrani is a fierce campaigner for women's rights in the war-ravaged nation, where the Islamist Taliban militants take a conservative stance on the position of women. So today we will show you how she has found a new outlet for her decades of advocacy, a new fitness center for women and setting the precedent as others wait for a better and conducive atmosphere to return. Let's have a look. These women in traditional Islamic attire, that is burqa, are happy to be exercising in an all-women's gym in the war-torn nation. Meet 36-year-old rights activist Maryam Durrani in Afghanistan's southern province of Kandahar has found a fresh outlet for her decades of advocacy a new fitness center for women that creates a safe space for Afghan women. Durrani runs a radio station for women and has served on the provincial council. Last year, Durrani switched back to open a female-only gym which draws about 50 women to attend each day. She was presented with the International Women of Courage Award by Michelle Obama in 2012. خانما اکثر اکثر اولشون مصور مثبت بود چون او ضرورتشان بود ولی متاسفانه چیزی که مرا خیلی ناراحت ساخت اکثر عمل مردای ما بودن مخصوصا مردهایی که تسلیم کرده بودن مردانی که در میدیا کار میکردن کسانی که خودشان از صاحب همو چی میگن یک ایدئولوژی یک ایده در جامعه میدانستند کسانی که فکر میکردن خیلی روشن فکر هستند و با فرهنگ هستند اونا بودن که خیلی زیاد در قسمت زی جایگاه تخریبات داشتن و مرا توین و تغییر کردن که این جایگاه یک جایگاه بد و زش و قیل شریعت تا بیان کردن For now, Durrani's focus is on serving the dozens of women who attend the club whom she describes as a cross-section of society including housewives and women who work outside the home especially after the coronavirus lockdown. It is also a way to show that Afghan women can be taught too in a country where concerns are growing that the hard-earned rights might be lost. خوش هستم راضی هستم زیاد میتونم که بر خانم ها کمک کنم بدون از آن خودم میتونم ارزش کنم بر سیاحت ما خوب است که میتونم بر فامیل ماشون میگیرم بر فامیل ما کمک اقتصادی میتونم بکنم With a true withdrawal sign between the United States and the Taliban who have fought a bloody war for 19 years many women in Afghanistan worry the militant group may exert its influence through formal political channels When the Taliban ruled Afghanistan, they banned education for females and barred women from leaving the house without a male relative. The group says it has changed, but many women remain skeptical. We have a lot of people who 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 have
چیزی گیره که میتونم گفته فقر اقتصادی عدم موجودیت سواد کافی زنان مشکلات امنیتی همه اینا چالش از سال شاید بسیار زیاد از این منطقه چون ما داریم بعد از چندین سال سکوت دوباره به خاطر دستیافتن به حق ما تلاش میکنیم و این مبارزه مبارزه یک روز دو روز نیست یک مبارزه طولانی است و زمان بر هست Even she hopes to inspire women of her generation to take alternate paths and show the world another facade of Afghanistan for much bigger and brighter. However, the situation improved significantly in the last decade due to the infusion of billions of dollars in international assistance and remittances from Afghan expatriates. Moving on, India is known for its cultural diversity and religious rituals. The festivals celebrated in India are a true manifestation of its rich culture and traditions. Recently, the people celebrated Mahalaya in different parts of India with traditional fervor. Mahalaya marks the end of ancestral ritual, Pitrapaksha and the onset of Hindu goddess Durga's mythical journey to the earth. Have a look. Scores of Hindu devotees gathered at Hooghly River in Kolkata city to take a holy dip and mark the occasion of Mahalia Amavas with traditional fervor. Mahale marks an end to the month of Pitra Paksh, which is observed by Hindus by remembering their ancestors. Families offer food, money and other gifts to their pitras or ancestors as a sign of reverence. According to a popular myth, it is believed that Goddess Durga begins her journey from Mount Kailash to her paternal home on earth after Mahalia on a palanquin elephant or horse. On the occasion, men clad in dhotis also perform rituals like tarpan, pind dan, and pays homage to their ancestors for salvation of departed souls. However, due to the pandemic, things are a bit different this year. This is in the auspicious day of Mahalaya that we have come to offer our water and food to our ancestors. This is on the occasion of Mohalai, we do Pitti Tarpon and Pitti Purus Tarpon. And after this, the Devi Pokko will start. This year is somewhat different. We are having our masks and maintaining safe distances um, because of COVID-19 pandemic. But uh, overall, we want to say that the religious performance has been very well satisfactory and thanks to Kolkata police and administration for it. In Odisha's capital city of Bhubaneswar, devotees flogged the Lingraj temple and performed special prayers for their forefathers. The ancestors, both from paternal and maternal sites, offered water and give bog or food to the Brahmins along river banks and a few ponds. The belief is that ancestors bless the family once the rituals are performed. The rituals is observed seven days before the Durga Puja. आज ये पितृपक्ष का आखिरी दिन है आज महालया है महालया जो है हम ये पंद्रह दिन का होता है पितृपक्ष पूरा महालया के दिन वैसे तो हमारे यहाँ हिंदू धर्म में हर एक आदमी का किसी किसी दिन हम श्राद्ध करते हैं लेकिन ऐसा मानते हैं कि जिसका अगर आपको तिथि याद नहीं है या कुछ आप कुछ असुविधा से आप नहीं कर पाते हैं तो ये एक आखिरी दिन कहते हैं कि आखिरी दिन आप सबका जितने भी आपके घर में बड़े बुजुर्ग चले गए हैं उनकी याद में आप उनको पिंडदान करते हैं 
Mahalia is celebrated on the full moon day or a day after the lunar month of Bhadrapada. The ritual is mainly celebrated in the eastern states of India, including Odisha, Bihar and West Bengal. According to the Hindu mythology, Mahalaya marks the end of Pitrapaksh Shraddh and heralds the beginning of Durga Puja for Bengalis. So with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.